Hi everyone, this is Fabi and today after teaching you quite a bit about embedded systems in my series dedicated to it, I want to talk to you about what it's like to be an embedded systems engineer in terms of the work you're going to do and I also want to tell you how easy it will be to migrate over to other fields with the experience you will gather. If you haven't watched my Embedded Systems Explained series and want to learn more about this field, I highly encourage you to watch the videos in this series, with 8 already being released and more coming in the future. The aim of this series is to explain embedded systems in a simple to understand manner and also to give you examples of where you can use these concepts in the real world. I already talked about GPIO, registers, interrupts, timers, ADC, zero interfaces, memory addressing, watchdog timers and low power modes. Quickly before jumping to today's video I want you guys to hear a short message from today's sponsor PCBWay. Special thanks to PCBWay which is a one-stop shop for all your PCB prototyping, 3D printing and CNC machining needs. Click the link in the description to buy 5 PCBs with 2 to 4 day shipping for under $30. I've personally used PCBWay before being sponsored by them to order PCBs for myself and over 100 colleagues from university for a class project and the interaction with them has always been great, same as with the quality of the delivered PCBs. No matter how complex your PCB requirements are, PCB way has got you covered. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what embedded systems engineers do. While it depends on the company and the exact role, unlike most other engineers, embedded systems engineers have quite a good mix of both hardware and software to deal with. This is because in the embedded world almost everything is very low level, meaning that writing drivers to interact with the hardware is actually very commonplace. And this means that you're going to have to deal with the hardware side too. So to give you an idea of the skill set of a well-versed embedded systems engineer, I'll list the following five. First of all, programming in C embedded and C++ with assembly being used for critical things and to analyze the compiled C output. Obviously, being good at writing code is very important to being successful in this field. Second of all, getting familiar with microcontroller families or ecosystems. Learning the architecture of microcontroller families is quite essential, but the good news is that once you learn one, it's going to get easier for you to learn new families later. You'll also read a lot of data sheets. The third one is memory management and this is a very important one in the embedded world because whether we are talking RAM, ROM or flash, memory resources come at a premium and therefore optimization is very important. The fourth one is circuit and layout design. While not all embedded systems engineers will design the circuit or the PCB layout from the ground up, it's still important to be familiar with these because you're going to have to understand the circuit design in order to do your work. Fifth one is measurements and debugging. In the embedded world, when you want to test out your work, you're going to most of the time have to take an instrument like a multimeter, an oscilloscope or a function generator and know how to use these. For this, of course, you also have to have intimate knowledge of how the hardware side of your system works. This goes hand in hand with the previous point, namely circuit and layout design. So as you can see, the spectrum of what you need to know is really broad and this is a good thing. Looking back at when I started university, I actually wanted to get into the computer science program because it was a lot more software focused than the electrical and computer engineering program I got accepted into. The reason I wanted to get into computer science is because like many other people my age, living in the era of digitalization, I was mainly attracted to writing software, computer software and smartphone apps. Now I won't say that if I had gotten into the computer science program, I wouldn't have been able to build a successful career. Quite the opposite in fact, because going into computer science is obviously an excellent choice. What I will say though is that if I had gotten accepted into computer science, I would have probably never ventured into the world of hardware on my own volition. This is the point I'm trying to make with taking a mixed hardware and software university program and later on becoming an embedded engineer. It definitely makes you a more well-rounded engineer by exposing you to both the hardware and the software side of things. Given that most people, just like me, are not equally drawn to both the hardware and the software side of things, this academic and career approach makes a lot of sense because it familiarizes you with both sides 
and allows you to develop more skills in the end. This in turn means that down the road you will have more opportunities not only in this field but also directly in software focused or hardware focused jobs. Pivoting into app development, web development or hardware design won't feel like you're starting over from scratch, instead it will merely mean that you have to pick up on new skills which will already feel familiar given your background. Given the mixed focus, I will also say that people with this career path will find it easier to shift into positions which oversee whole projects from a technical standpoint like product managers, especially if the project has both hardware and software sides. One more thing to keep in mind is that it's a lot less likely to get bored with your work when what you do isn't the same every day. Depending on the phase of the project, you could be doing research, hardware development, simulations, software development, or debugging. Not all embedded engineers have this level of flexibility though, and this is why I consider it very important to clarify this before getting employed. A rough rule is that the bigger the company, the less likely it is that your work will be diversified. As an embedded engineer, you can see a project progress almost from start to finish, excluding mechanical, hydraulic and perhaps other parts which are not related to this field. This is why I'd recommend all engineers, but especially embedded systems engineers, to find jobs in small companies or even startups where working along all stages of a project is commonplace. Personally, I've started working in a small company during college and now, five years later, I'm still at the same company because what I do for work is really diversified even beyond what an embedded systems engineers would usually do. While I've since moved on to a management role, given that the company is small, I still do development work on a daily basis and I oversee the work that is being done on all projects, which is absolutely great. I have to admit though, there's also a small negative side to being an embedded systems engineer. First of all, the tools that you work with when you write and debug your code, the IDEs, are really trash when compared to let's say Visual Studio. Most schematic and layout tools aren't brilliant either. You do feel like you're going back in time when you're using these, but there are of course alternatives like writing code in a text editor and then just debugging it in the IDE. Second of all, it's a lot harder to work remotely when compared to a computer software engineer because you have to carry development boards and measurement instruments which are usually bulky and heavy. Anyways, in the end, the positives definitely outweigh the negatives and of course I recommend you guys pick embedded systems engineers simply because of this mixed approach which I think brings a lot of benefits down the road. I hope you guys found this video useful, if you did make sure to like this, share with your friends and subscribe for more videos about engineering topics in the future. Thank you again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video, I will catch up with you in the next one. Stay tuned!